if you fly the Mi 24 in DCS, you may have noticed a tendency when you pulled back on the stick too much, it, it will uh, pitch up violently in a cobra maneuver type thing. <laughs> and often, full forward side click won't stop it. is a phenomenon called mushing. And the reason you might experience this so much more severely in the Mi-24 than other helicopters is a few things, but a big reason are those huge wings that produce 25% of your lift in cruise. The US Army defines mushing as a temporary stall condition occurring in helicopters during high G maneuvers when at high forward air speeds aft cyclic is abruptly applied. Also, 10 minute helicopter tutorials goes over it. The Soviets referred to this in the Mi-24 as podvat or pickup in English. It would cause the rotors to strike the tail boom especially in the hot and thin air of Afghanistan, and it was one of many reasons for pilots to respect the dangerous crocodile. I will first explain the aerodynamics mumbo jumbo, then go through the solutions and preventatives. So if you want to skip the mumbo jumbo of the why, just click the categories in the video to skip to the solution. This happens to most helicopters. The number one reason and the most universal is one. As the angle of attack increases, so that the air is coming from below the rotor rather than above, this upflow through the rotor causes an increase in rotor angle of attack, which then causes a retreating blade stall. And as the right side of the rotor disc stalls from the increase of angle of attack, the effect occurs almost 90 degrees later from gyroscopic precession in the back of the rotor disc, causing a rapid pitch up. Another reason this phenomenon is also so severe is that most helicopters have a rotor with a twist or a washout. This means that instead of stalling all at once, the inside stalls first, and then as the AOA increases, the stall progressively reaches the tip. Thus, the twist helps the rotor produce lift at a wider range of AOAs and makes stalls less sudden. But since the entire rotor can't be at the optimum angle of attack for lift, this twist can also reduce peak performance and add drag. The Mi-24 rotor is only twisted three and a half degrees, whereas the average seems to be around uh, seven to eight degrees. The Blackhawk has 16 degrees. I think this small three and a half degree amount was done so that the rotor could be more efficient, allowing more of the rotor blade to be at optimum AOA, but this also makes stalls more sudden and harder to handle when the blades have so little twist or washout and take only three and a half degrees to go from little stall to full stall. However, what really makes this unique 
for the Mi 24 is probably one of my favorite things about it. The aerodynamics of its wings. Two, the wings in the Mi 24 are designed in a way that they are tilted 19 degrees up higher than any other helicopter. But the wing also stalls around 17 degrees AOA. This means that any positive AOA to the fuselage will stall the wing. And since the wing is behind the rotor and behind the center of gravity, its lift also pushes the nose down. This is deliberate as by pushing the nose down, it means you need less forward cyclic, which Mill writes helps pilot comfort in keeping the cyclic close. But also, since forward cyclic increases the AOA of the retreating side of the rotor, less forward cyclic delays retreating blade stall so that it happens at a faster speed. But anyways, the wing is pushing your nose down, and when it stalls, its lift decreases and causes a nose up. A nose up that your stalling rotor may not have the authority to stop, or might even help stall your rotor. And since the wing is carrying 25% of your weight, it's stalling means that your rotor needs to pick up the slack, possibly causing it to also stall as it can't deal with a one third increase in weight carried. In addition, three, the elevator is your main source of pitch stability. The Mi-24 has a very unique design where the collective also moves the elevator. I could do a whole video just on the Mi-24's tail. Having the elevator moved by the collective is just such cool and unique aerodynamics. It's 7 degrees up at full collective and 12 degrees down at bottom collective. The elevator itself will stall at about 15 degrees. And since at the high collective that you need to fly fast, we'll have your elevator about 6 to 7 degrees up. It will then stall around 10 degrees or less AOA for the whole fuselage. Mill first did this design on the Mi 6, and the intent was to have the elevator as close to zero AOA as possible in all phases of flight so that you would have the greatest margin of movement, um, greatest margin of stability before it stalled. Give high collective, and the elevator points up towards the airflow in a climb, or stays level with the horizon as you pitch down for cruise. Descend, and it points down into the airflow. And for turning, it is creating lift. He also did it so that instead of increasing the collective, raising the nose, and vice versa, the opposite happens, lowering the nose when you increase collective and raising the nose when you lower collective, helping speed changes and stability. However, when this elevator stalls during a cobra, I, I mean a mush, I, I mean a pudvat, the force the elevator creates to pitch your nose back down to neutral AOA and lift your tail goes away when it stalls. And the rapid pitch up from mushing will get even worse without the elevator to slow it down. This causes a cascading effect where your wing stalls, causing a slight pitch up. And then your rotor stalls, causing a bigger pitch up. 
And then your elevator stalls about 10 degrees later, making it so nothing stops the pitch up. And you can achieve AOA numbers that would make a make 29 blush. When this mushing happens, you need to do two things. One, lower collective one to three degrees at least. This will help unstall your rotor blades to regain control. If your positive AOA has gotten so bad that your elevator is stalled, lowering collective will also tilt the elevator back down into the airflow so that it can be unstalled and help stabilize you again. Two, full cyclic forward, <laughs> I mean, of course, you want to already be giving it so that when you lower collective and the rotor unstalls, it's ready to recover you. Three, I know I said there would be two, but this is really optional. If you are about to crash, then the best thing to do is to roll level. This will decrease your altitude loss rate and decrease the power needed to recover and maintain altitude. If you expect to turn hard and ride the limit of mushing, often decreasing collective one to three degrees as you enter the turn also works as a preventative measure to at least make it easier to ride the limit. Okay, now we know how to recover and how to maybe prevent it. Now, there is also figuring out how hard you can turn or maneuver without mushing. The way to do this is a G-limit. The manual has some specific G-limits for speed and altitude, but here are my recommendations. The manual lists 1.8 G as the maximum G, but the suit does better for DCS. I made my own table based on weight. <laughs> Once you get close to max G, you will start hearing blade flapping. That's the stall beginning to happen in your rotors. And once you get used to it, you'll be able to ride the limit like a fighter pilot. When you're loaded with weapons, fuel, and have some altitude, you'll likely find that 1.6 G is a good limit to use until you lose a lot of weight. Altitude has a big effect too. Above 2,000 meters uh, sea level, you don't really want to pull any more than 1.4 G. For this, I find it very helpful to reference G pull required for level turn versus bank angle chart. These work for both fixed wings and helicopters. 55 degree bank is a 1.8 G turn and level flight. So you can think of this as your absolute limit in a level turn. And if you're above 2000 meters altitude, you won't want to roll more than 45 degrees in a level turn to keep your G's from going over 1.4 G. In common combat situations with a lot of weight where you don't want to pull more than 1.6 G, you won't want to go much over a 50 degree bank in a level turn. And of course, you can exceed these bank angles by a loss of altitude to not over G. I love using the wings as dive brakes to do a 90 to 120 degree bank turn to get away from a target that I just did a rocket or gun run on. Maintain 1.6 G and exit at the treetops doing 300 kilometers per hour. 
The Mi-24 is the best helicopter in DCS for doing this high speed, fast maneuvering attacks. You won't turn like this in a K-50. People say the Mi-24 can't maneuver. And yeah, I mean, 1.8G is lower than the 3.5G the K-50 can pull. But try pulling 3.5G for more than a few seconds in that thing. And can the K-50 maneuver like this? at 300 kilometers per hour. In my opinion, this is one of the things that makes the Mi-24 aerodynamics so peculiar and interesting. I hope you learned something. Many happy turns. Oh, and, and uh, some turning tips. While I am on the subject, left roll, will cause a nose down moment and a right roll will cause a nose up moment because of gyroscopic precession. Also, the helicopter has a self-writing tendency. However, this self-writing tendency is way stronger for a right bank than a left one. This will also mean that a right turn will need more cyclic to fight this tendency than a left one. The rural autopilot really helps to make this more even between both turn directions, but it can only do so much. And for turn coordination, I like to vary my pedal based on bank angle. More bank angle, more pedal into the turn. I find this gets me good results for keeping the slip ball centered. Now go out there and turn like a precise maniac and pull some G's.